Well, you already fixed John in one important way. All the shows he's been doing, all the time he's been doing this, he used to say, I need to take a commercial break. <laughs> what did I say today? <laughs> Let's just take one. Yeah. Because yeah. Marla you've, will correct you. You've changed him already here. I know. See, isn't that great? In fact, I want to give Marla a... I mean, she's on the paper, folks. Look at wow. that. Look at that. She, and it says, I don't know if you can see it, Orange County Clutter Buster Marla Stone in a prominent, <laughs> prominent Orange County paper. That's yes. a terrific picture of you, Marla. Yes. Actually, yes. the Orange Look County Register did a story. Teresa Walker followed me around for about three, four days to clients. And mm -hmm. it was a big, huge article, three pages. So it's called uh, Clutter Buster, Marla Stone's The Clutter Buster mm -hmm. or something like that. That's great. And you've written so many blogs. I mean, you you keep up with 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 all this i mean right yes i'm I mean, actually very close to finishing a book oh I, my gosh. yes i have some literary agents interested and then of course they'll field that out to some publishers um, but really it's about the theories that i've created and mm -hmm. there's so much more involved in getting your space organized so i believe the first step to getting your space organized whether it's a large business whether you want to you know go paperless or declutter or get you know your cubicles in the right order mm -hmm. or however you want to set up your business or your home that you organize yourself first right and that is where the language theory comes in and i'll actually also you know, the uh, the outer is a reflection of the inner. Mm, so if mm -hmm. you go on that premise, if you have a lot of chaos still inside, if you're wounded, if you have wounded parts of you jumping in and taking over and throwing you in the back seat, and you really haven't addressed things in, you know, in a therapy way or with a good lifestyle coach, then really... I can organize any space and get it so uber organized, mm -hmm. you know, you'll be able to find everything. But if the inside is still chaotic, I guarantee you within three to four months, you know, the people are calling back their organizers mm -hmm. that don't address the inner mm -hmm. process. And they're saying, oops, I made a big mess again. Right. And that's, Clean it up for me. Exactly. And that's what we do not do at Ideal Lifestyle. We are not, you know, personal, personal assistance. assistance. Yeah. We're not, uh, you know, scuttle maids. Mm -hmm. We're not Molly made. Uh, we are here to give the client a long-term system, clear them out of whatever's you know, perpetuating this behavior to make sure it doesn't happen again. Wow. And that's what separates you from the rest because a lot of these other organizations, they don't have their master's degree, Paul, and they don't have the 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 knowledge that Marla has, right? Right? I, I believe that it is so important to address the inner person first. Yes. So when I go to interview a CEO at a large, you know, company. Because you do workshops, right? I, I mean, do that's workshops important. That's important. and I do seminars yeah. and I do training programs. You increase productivity. I it, Threefold. Threefold. So you, you're you're meeting with the CEO. So what do you what do you ask? Well, them? the first thing I'm talking about is you know what are they what do they do in their life? Who's in their life? You know, did they have uh, any traumatic events in their life? Um, what are their goals? What are their dreams? Um, there's some techniques that I use that are highly specialized that I developed to really help understand what is inside a person that's blocking them emotionally from mm -hmm. going forward mm -hmm. with their uh, life goals. Mm -hmm. um, if their space is not organized, it's very difficult to see that this person could reach all these great, you know, things that they want to do in life. Right. So right. it's really about understanding the person, understanding what's happened to the person, clearing out those cobwebs, clearing out the inner clutter, and then going forward into the space. And then that person is really present. Mm -hmm. Because if I have a person that's suffering from a divorce or uh, gambling problems or they've had trauma or they've, you know, lost a loved one or mm. you know they're losing their home mm -hmm. or anything traumatic mm -hmm. or they had trauma in early childhood that's still coming up and mm -hmm. surfacing in their behavior and their ability to communicate then it's going to be very difficult for them to see their objects clearly mm. and you know my goal is not as i'm not a therapist any longer mm -hmm. and i and i you know, do not do therapy. I don't do the traditional therapies anymore, uh, gestalt or cognitive behavioral restructuring. So I've created really what I consider more spiritual or metaphysical techniques mm -hmm. that actually help clear a person out 
Um, there's tapping that I'll do with people. Just really extraordinary mm-hmm. things. Effective. That very effective, very healing. So the person is really healed long-term quickly mm-hmm. so we can get to their stuff. Because most people, when they're calling me, they've just had enough of their stuff. Yes. So if you have a major corporation, you can work with, you work with, you start with the CEO. You got to start with the top, right? I do. And then go down. I do. I can work with, you know, the management team Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or, you know, even, um, you know, division managers Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and work with them. If they're the ones that really truly are the ones that are responsible Mm. for keeping the space clear, right? that's the person. But really, a lot of times these people are telling me that it is the CEO. CEO right. who's causing the over collecting and the over purchasing and the mm. over accumulation. Mm-hmm. And so I'll tell them, look, I'll work with you. We'll get it all organized. But unless you teach your upper management or the head of the business, this, the theories that go behind staying organized, then I, I will not guarantee mm-hmm. that, you know, this won't get recluttered. Right. Right, and and they love you in the end because you increase productivity and sounds like you save costs, too, because they're not doing repetitive things, right? Ex- exactly. You know, your friends won't necessarily tell you uh, that you have too much clutter, or if they do, they will not be helpful in helping you declutter. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but I do tell people, you know, I've been known to go into a home or a business and say, oh, this looks like a dorm room, college uh-huh. dorm room. You know, how's that working for you? Uh-huh. You know, and it's not. You know, people want to live in a in an aesthetic place they want to be able to have access to their things find the things they want to use and they want things beautiful sure sure and what i really i mean i've interviewed marla last night about um and i mean there's shows called hoarders and these people are using it so like it's okay tell me about that you she said john you don't call them hoarders right no i it's it's you know i learned early on as a young social worker that you know we don't call people uh schizophrenics or bipolars or even diabetics or you know we don't walk around if somebody says they have heart disease oh you know you're a heart disease Mm -hmm. so it's it's not appropriate it's it's a term actually for animals really yes hoarding you know uh, came from the word hamstern which is a german word Mm -hmm. and really it's what animals do to survive yes and they'll go and collect whatever to make their nests and barricades from from the elements and from predators Mm -hmm. and so when they applied the term hoarders and Mm. hoarding to humans it was really truly disturbing for me sure and you know for many years it was not covered as a serious challenge Mm -hmm. so most therapists were putting it under OCD obsessive compulsive disorder and then they would put hoarding type well that has changed. It's now in the Diagnostical and Statistical Manual, what we call the DSM. DSM. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still not considered considered a parity diagnosis. So insurance wouldn't have to cover it, oh, which I also find, yeah. you know, really disturbing. Right. And so, uh, you know, if you're listening to this and you have somebody that you love yes. that has an over accumulating, over collecting challenge, which is what I call it. Yeah. They have churning behaviors where they keep turning it around and moving it and it, it's growing in size and they're not able to walk freely through their space, then please Please call your congressman and make sure that you get this to be a parity diagnosis like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depression, Mm -hmm. PTSD, panic disorder, because it is serious and there's nothing these people can do about it. It's in their brain. Right, right. It's part of their brain. And And across all socioeconomic levels, right? Oh, I've helped people in Newport Coast in 10,000 square foot homes. Uh, I yeah. help people of all nationalities, all you know, backgrounds, across all socioeconomic sure, statuses, sure. and it, it's across the board in every country, every place. Australia has it going on. China has it going everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. everywhere. But this is what I, I, I love about your approach. You said your goal is categorizing stuff, not throwing it away. Yes, that's you know. powerful. <laughs> yes. It's not. You don't have to be scared because Marla just doesn't throw your stuff away. She'll ask you one. At a time. You handhold them and help them because they're, they they're attached to this, right? Yes, it is. It is. You know, with with this business, 
you even if it's in corporate i've seen i've seen over accumulation in corporate offices i've worked with people that are presidents of banks mm -hmm. ceos doc, like i said doctors lawyers mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they are doing this behavior and they they really can't help it it's a primitive part of the brain acting out mm -hmm. in order to stop it we'd have to cut out part of the brain which we're not going to do no no that would not be good <laughs> so but what i do yeah. is in those cases where i know that um, nothing is actually going to be parted with. Uh, they have no intention of parting with anything. Everything is sentimental. Yes. Everything is loved. Everything right. is used. Even if it's not, they think it will be. And everything serves a purpose. What we do then is we clear the space. We do the categorizing, which is amazing. I woke up one night thinking, oh, that's the secret. It's categorizing. Oh. You know, because when I was first doing this business and following what was in yeah. the other books, they were saying, you know, oh, do you want this? Do you you want this do you, do you need, need that this? and they would show a person a shoe then an umbrella then a book then a sock then a you know electronic equipment mm -hmm. and it was too overwhelming for the senses so what we do first is we clear the entire space mm -hmm. except for furniture and large pieces and artwork and then we categorize everything down to a science yes. you know every rubber band in the entire place is with a rubber band every food product with food product and there's no mixed venue and then we contain it and then we go through each item saying mm -hmm. tell me about this mm -hmm. but with people with more serious challenges we do not do that we simply categorize we contain in clear bins mm -hmm. and then we stack those bins in safe places in the space so they can now walk through the home, sleep on the bed, they can mm. use their desk, they they actually can live in a space that's safe now, and they still have everything. And what has happened is mm -hmm. because now they know that they have 700 sponges or, you know, 1,200 toothbrushes, <laughs> uh, they stop collecting. Because mm, they could see it all in one they space. They see it. And before, when it is in piles, yeah. they forget that they have it. They forget where it is. They get very stressed out. And the mm -hmm. stress actually triggers them going back out oh. and bringing more in. Right, right. And you've seen houses that is just, you can't even open the front door. I mean, you've seen... Uh, yes. Yeah. I, you know, and there's a difference between squalor and, and oh. uh, over-collecting okay. and over-accumulating. But, yeah. I mean, the two go hand in hand. But some people over-collect and over-accumulate, but the place is not filthy. Okay. And then there are places that actually have become filthy because the, you know, depression sets in because of the over-accumulating and over-collecting and then right. not having a place to sleep or eat or, you know, do anything in the space. Depression sets in and then, you know, nobody is motivated to clean. Mm -hmm. And so if it goes on long enough, we have what's called squalor. Wow. And people find like dead animals. You ever find a dead animal? Oh, no, no, no. no. I, okay. I, you know, some droppings and things like Ugh. that. But, uh, you know, it sounds disgusting. But when you have enough compassion yes. for human beings and, and their behaviors, yes. and you're non judgmental, right. then really all it is, and when they're asking for help, or even if they're not asking for help, but they're desperate because they're, you know, being asked to move mm -hmm. or, or to leave their home, then you want to drop your judgment right. immediately and stop shaming people uh, about how they live mm -hmm. and figure out either how to do it the way I do it, mm -hmm. which is working right. um, without shaming and judgment uh, or get some help for them. Um, if it's a loved one or if it's yourself that is doing this, you know, there are people that know how to do it properly.